to give this message what the Lord has put in my heart. And if you guys have your Bibles tonight, if we can, just please go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 8. Verse 8. We all can please get situated. Verse 8. Romans 8, verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. And if so, the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He is none of his. I want to read it one more time if I can. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if, be, and now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And I want to minister tonight, just for a few moments tonight. Do you have the Spirit of Christ? And it's a new segment that we're going to be getting on all the way to at least verse 11. Do you have the spirit of life in you? Let's pray. Mm -hmm. Dear God in heaven, we come before you tonight, O oh God, and we're so thankful, Lord, for your mercy. Lord, we're so thankful, Lord, that we have the opportunity, O oh God, to never roam. Though the depths of sin may take us far, your love abounds much greater than where sin abound. And Lord, we would ask so graciously, O oh Lord, that you would move tonight, that you would flow through me, O oh God, that you would use me as a vessel to reach, to minister, to touch lives, Lord, not only body in this building, Lord, but those that are going to be watching by internet, that you would anoint me to preach, to teach, without compromise, Lord, without a stutter of a word. Give me boldness, Lord. Give me courage. Give me strength. And I would also ask, Lord, for you to anoint the people, Lord, Anoint their spirit, O oh God, to receive. Anoint their hearts, Lord, to accept. And I thank you in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. My Lord, the presence of God is in this place, ain't it? You know, as I grow, as I'm growing old. <laughs> no, I'm not old, but I'm getting there. Every time I walk into this building, it seems that the Spirit of God, as we read in that verse, in verse 9, and that's what I'm going to be ministering on, I really mean to see, say verse 8 and verse 9. Verse 9, though, every time it seems that I walk in this building, sometimes I come with such grief in my heart that, Lord, I'm not going to make it. Lord, I feel like there's no way as I leave this place that I'm going to leave unhelped, unsecure. I know I'm going to leave the same way I came in, full of grief. Every time. And then there's some times, some days that I walk into this building, this little building, and I'm full of faith, I'm full of Lord. We're able, we're able. We're able. Lord, you're going to move tonight like never before. And I remember the day that I walked in. I came in grievous, full of doubt and unbelief as I was being tossed to and fro by the powers of darkness. And I remember I was leading worship. But then we began to sing that song, Come Holy Spirit, I need thee. Come, Holy Spirit, in thy own gentle way. Come, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. I need thee. And as we began to sing that song, the 
Lord began to move in a particular way, I believe in a way that it's indescribable, it's uncomprehendable. Because when His Spirit starts moving, you really don't know what you feel inside. That's all you feel is His presence. Tears just begin to flow down your cheeks. I remember goosebumps beginning and I had a pause as I was playing that guitar for it was it was magnificent. I couldn't, I couldn't describe it. And as I read this week, I felt that same presence that I feel every time I come into this place. The presence of Almighty God. Listen, but in the Spirit, if so, be that Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And like I said, that's what I want to touch on tonight. I don't want to keep it too long. I'm not here to... Have you guys walk out with a Bible degree? <laughs> I'm just here to give you what little I can, what I'm capable of. And let's break down that word if we can, just for a moment. That word, but you are not in the flesh. Because this describes the basis of where we are. Because as I stated, the first verse of Romans chapter 8, verse 1, as I always say, it, it states, that there is no, therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. For you walk after the Spirit, not after the flesh. That's stated now where we are in Christ Jesus, where we stand. Verse 2, for the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Explains how it works, how it came to be for the law of Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. It shows us how it works on where we stand, on why we stand there. Because of the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus made us free from the loss and of death. Verse 3 shows us why. So not only the Holy Spirit through the Paul the Apostle gives us how it came to be, but it, it showed us why. And not only that, how it came to be. That for the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. So why it came to be in not only that, the illustration, the physical illustration on how it came to be. That the Messiah would be crucified for the transgressions of the world. For my sin, for your sin, for our shortfalls, for my shortfalls. Amen? Verse 5 shows us that we have a choice now to either walk after the Spirit to mind things of the Spirit, to mind the cross of Christ, to follow after Christ and crucify, to deny yourself daily before Him, pick up your cross and follow Him, and then you are worthy to be His disciple, or to mind the flesh. Verse 6, it says, the consequences of minding the flesh. It says, the carnal mind is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Verse 7, it says, because, and it shows you why, why it is to be carnally minded is death. It's because to be carnal, to have the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, and neither indeed it can be. So having a carnal mind, having the thought that I can serve God, that I can please God, that I can be a good Christian, I can be a good person, I can quit this bad habit, I can quit doing this. Is what? Enmity against God. Why? Because God doesn't operate in you. He operates in the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Verse 8, it says plainly that the flesh cannot please God. And that word flesh is not talking about our natural, our skin, our bones, our physical appearance. But rather the total opposite. It talks about our willpower. Not so much in effect our will. Is bad is death, but that our willpower is bad. Well, what's the difference between willpower and your will? Your willpower is you thinking that because you have that will, you can do it on yourself. When you, in the own natural way, we cannot. But through the spirit of life, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Excuse me. Through the life, the spirit, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's the only way. And and in Hebrews. Paul would say 
that only faith can please God. And as we described last week, what? Jesus Christ is the source, the cross is the means, and faith unlocks the door. Amen? And then verse 9 we have right here. Paul, again, making it so much intimate, so much individually. But do you have the Spirit? Because if you do have the Spirit, why are you pleasing the flesh? Why are you after material things? Why are you after the things of this world? Don't you know that this world is not your home? Don't you know that you're only passing through? Don't you know that you're a, a pilgrim in a foreign land? But in this process that we're living in our daily base, in our daily base, we have, when we came to salvation, God, for, God fought for us at Calvary. Am I right? When He went to the cross, He not only defeated sin, but He defeated every, fall, every fallen angelic being that ever existed that fell. And in the Bible it says that one third of the angels fell. And took it on the sin nature and darkness. You guys understand what I'm saying? So when he bled and died on that cross, 12 all the way to 3 p.m. For you and me, he not just he did not just die for our sin. At least if one to comprehend the acts of sin on what we do. You know how some of us we, we think that. Oh, once we do something bad, we have to repent. And yes, we do have to repent. But God did not just die for sinful acts. He died for sin inside the heart. Original sin. Original sin. Sin is not an act. Sin is not drinking or smoking. Sin is inside the heart. Sin is inside the heart. Sin is not going to a midnight club. Sin is not cussing. Those are the results of sin. But the very root of sin is in man's heart and inside their own very being. It's inside of my heart. It's inside of your heart. Well, someone would ask, well, how, how can I get rid of this sin, this sin nature inside of my heart? Do I start going to church? Do I start committing religious acts? Do I get involved with a food drive or a ministry? Do I start preaching? Do, what do I do? Do I start reading my Bible? Do I start praying? All those things are good within themselves. God does honor those things. But that is not the characteristic that God moves in. He doesn't move on the things we do, but He moves on the things that He has done. Well, Emmanuel, what did he exactly do? Not only did he die for sin, original sin, but he died so that the powers of darkness, so that the sin nature itself can be dormant. That it don't have to dominate your life. That it don't have to rule your life. You don't have to be bound by that marijuana addiction. You don't have to be bound by that Jack Daniel that you can't put down. You don't have to be Bound by that lust that overtakes you. Are you guys hearing me tonight? You guys don't have to be bound by that. Well, Emmanuel, those are things that unsaved people do. Those are things that people that don't know God, that people that don't go to church do. I'm sorry, but you would be shocked on how many people are addicted to marijuana. On how uh, they're addicted to Jack Daniel. How they're addicted to Bud Light. That when it comes down to Sunday on March Madness is coming up for basketball. You will be surprised how many playoff parties are going to be in the Christian church that are going to be having alcohol in it. But Emmanuel's only 2% and Jesus drove wine. He drove wine. It says in the word of God. How about that? I don't really have the time to get into it, but it was fermented wine, new wine. Grape juice. And plus God being holy. God being perfect in his own way. We never partake in such an unholy act. It would go against his character. His being. Are you guys hearing me? 
I hope this is getting to your spirit. I hope I'm breaking it elementary for that you guys can understand and that I can understand because I need it elementary as well. I need it as a basic platform. Believe me, I'm going to go over this tonight. I'm going to go over and say, man, I missed a lot of good stuff because I can only break it down so much. I'm a human, just like you guys. But what separates me from other beings? What separates me from other Christians, other youth pastors, other Christians? And I have this to answer. The Spirit of God that dwelleth in me. You know, this is what we're missing in the modern church. And this is why Paul would ask it. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. In the Spirit. What does that mean to be in the Spirit? Let's break it down first. That first phrase that I was going to get to, I got off a little off track. It says, but ye are not in the flesh. In one sense of the word is asking the question, since you are now a believer and no longer depending on the flesh, why are you resorting to the flesh? Why are you making the flesh your answer, your solution? How many of you guys find that in the modern church? That, oh, that we have to fast, that we have to do this. We have, we have to obey this law. We have to make this law. We can't show our elbows in church. The girls have to wear jean dresses and no makeup. Not one time can you find that in the Bible. Why? Because that's not of God, that's in the flesh, Paul would say. And he was stating, if, if you think that's going to... Did that very thing save you by you keeping laws and, and regulations and rules? No. You know how many people that I talked to that weren't saved that told me that they don't want to be Christians because there's too much rules and regulation that we have to follow that we cannot ourselves fulfill. I remember talking to a co-worker. She said, well, Emmanuel, if that law is so holy and you told me you can't live up to it, why do you even try? And it was a good question. And I answered it with this. That he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. You guys get that? The Holy Spirit that is living inside of you. The moment you accepted Christ, he, he did not just want to fight the powers of darkness. He just did not want to fight hell itself. He did not just want to fight original sin. But now he wants to fight inside of you now. He wants to fight that bondage. He wants to fight that sin nature that you cannot, on your own power and own might, cannot defeat. He wants to fight for you. He wants to be your advocate. Amen. Hallelujah. In that law, in that courtroom, that the devil has every right to punish you, to judge you, to, to sentence you to death. But thank God, the Spirit of God that dwells in you, Paul said, that dwell in you, that changed you, that edified you in Christ. Not your religious works, not your religious power, not you being a self-righteous, I'm going to say it, punk. No, none of that safe, none of that is going to keep you. But what? The spirit of the living God that dwelleth in you. So why are you resorting to the flesh? Why are you trying to please God when you know you can't? Well, you know, I've been saved for 30 years, and you don't know how many words I speak in other tongues. You don't know how many church events I went to. You don't know how many times I went to prayer and I, when I didn't want to go to prayer. You don't know all the times that I did this and I did that. And Paul did that same very thing. No one knew the, Paul, knew, knew the law like Paul did. No one knew the law like Paul did. He was the next in line for Sahedrin. And you would say that it was greater than pastoralship in those days. Those, in those days, that would be a master's degree in Bible theology. Get a hold of that. But even he would say, for, for I know that in me, Romans chapter 7 verse 18, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing, for to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Well, what is he saying right there, man? Because I really don't understand the Bible. He's saying that his will, he wants to serve God. He wants to please God. He loves God. He don't hate God. 
He wants to love him. He wants to adore him. But he finds that he says, my will is present with me. But when I, when I try to do this, when I try to open my Bible and read, when I try to go into the throne room of grace, I find myself failing before God. I find myself falling short. I find myself the moment I open the Bible, the two seconds later I close it. Why? Because no good thing dwelleth in me. And evil is present with me, Paul would say. But he's saved in there, he's born again. He loves God. I thought Christianity, you're supposed to be holy, you're supposed to do, you're supposed to be the salt to the earth. Yes, that is true. But not on our own basis. Not without Calvary. Not without Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the source, the cross, the means. And faith is going to unlock that door for the power of God to dwell in you. Let me get into it. It says, but the phrase, but in the spirit, in effect, is saying, you now have the Holy Spirit to help you. Mm. My Lord. Some of you guys ask me how I go by day by day. Some of you guys may ask, Emmanuel, have you ever failed God? Yes, I have. But you see, it's not on my own account, if I can say that, that I'm saved. It's not. When I fall short, and no, I'm not condoning sin. No, I'm not saying it's okay to fall short before God. But I'm saying that no born-again Christian wants to fill God. And every born-again true Christian hates sin. And I can tell you, out of this, my own 18 years of being in this life, when I got to know Jesus, I hate sin now. I hate it. But do I fall short? Under that eternal, at least one could say, not eternal, but the sin nature. That's what I'm looking for. The sin nature now, does it ever try to rise up? Yes, it does. And sometimes I do fall short. Most of the time. But let me tell you. Let me tell you something. It's not based on me falling short. It's not based on me even getting victories in my life. It's based on Jesus Christ and what he did at the cross because he won everything for me. He fights my battles. He fights my battles. He wins my wars. Hallelujah. Woo! Woo! I can feel that. I don't know if fire is coming out of this mic or the Holy Spirit is coming down and flowing. My Lord, I feel that it revs me up. It pumps my soul. It keeps me going. Why? Because my Lord, he fights everything for me now. When the sin nature rises up, it's not my job to fast 40 days. But it's the Holy Spirit's now job. Hallelujah. That's his position in your life. It's to fight in you. Oh, hallelujah. So when the powers of darkness rise up against you, when hell itself, gates are shaking to be open, what do you do? You go to the comforter. You go to the comforter. Jesus said you go to the helper. But who is he? Who is he? He's the Lamb of God that was slain before the very foundations of this world. Hallelujah. My Lord. My Lord. Are you feeling that? It's a revving up in your soul. If you can't do it, but he can. Why? Because he's fighting for you. So why do we try to fight this battle? You know, I had, a, I had a, a study that we're studying not too long ago, the battle. And it was in Romans chapter 7. That why do we think that we can all of a sudden, when we needed the grace of God from the very moment in order to be saved, why do we think that we can come up with this power to live for God? That I myself can do it. When in all matter, we can't. We can't. And a beggar's description, when we try to do it by ourselves, that we, we ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, you can sit aside just for a moment because I want to do it. I think I'm going to encourage, I think I'm a champion. I think I'm a, I fasted 40 days. I think I went to the Pope and confessed, you don't know how many beads I have on my rosary. Good Lord. If you would ask that rosary to save you, that very moment a truck came to you 
I guarantee you that truck would run you over. Don't say that to be mean, but it's the truth. Can you imagine? Someone's drowning in the ocean. In the middle of nowhere, no land to be found. After a long day, they're stuck out there. Their boat went out. Their engine went out. And then they're stuck in the middle of the ocean. All of a sudden, a good current comes and wipes that boat over. And now you're stuck in the middle of the ocean. And then you have your necklace with you. Your rosary. But then a man comes on a jet ski. And you tell him. And he tells you. Hey, I have this jet ski. I know you're stuck out here. But let me help you. Let me save you. Oh no, my rosary can solve this problem. I know God is going to rescue me himself because of how many beads. I still got tons of beads in my pocket. And I know how to connect everything. So I'm good. Or let's even bring it up with the Christian. Oh no, the, the, this is what the faith, the uh, Faith-based people believe. Oh, that God will come down from heaven and open the floodgates of heaven and rescue you. Yes, that is true. He can do that. But he won't go against his very authority. He won't go against his very operation. And that is faith. I love what Paul said. He said the Jews re require a sign. And the Greek require wisdom. But I preach Christ crucified. I preach Christ crucified. Hallelujah to the Jews that is a stumbling block. To the great foolishness. But I preach Christ crucified. Woo. Hallelujah. Why would he say that? Because that man that's drowning in the ocean is depending on what? A religious act. A thing that never purchased them off that auction block of sin. That can't wipe no failure away. That can't baptize with the Holy Ghost. That can't set the soul free. That can't set that alcoholic that's bound by alcohol free. That can't set that drug addict that's bound by drugs free. It just can't. It don't work that way. He don't work that way. He only works and operates through the life of the Spirit. The Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. He don't work any other way. How many people that you find that are trying to get to God because of what they do? No, we, we get to God on who He is and what He's done for us. That's how we get to God. That's how we reach God. If you want His presence in your life, He you don't, you don't care what you've done yesterday. He don't care what you've done today. That's all He cares about is if you believe. If you believe. If you believe. Hallelujah. He don't care about what you've done. Because in all matters, if we were to look at how we perform, I guarantee each and single one of you, including myself, would cast ourselves to hell. Because we perform horrible. We are horrible Christians. We're not, uh, we're not powerful Christians because, because we're powerful on ourselves. No. We're powerful Christians because we serve a powerful God. Believe me. I studied a little bit of the Quran. I studied a little bit about the Buddhist Confucianism. In all right means, I pray that you guys do as well. You'll find out what's the truth, like I did. You know, I used to believe in that way out stuff. What do you mean? Aliens. <laughs> my, my Lord, I was into it. I would spend hours and hours of, of reading about garbage, about the Anunnaki and who knows what. I used to get into that Illuminati stuff. What all means, the Illuminati don't even know what they're doing. <laughs> they don't know nothing about the Bible. They claim 666 and they don't even know what, my God, that ain't gonna even happen in the US. It's gonna happen in, in the Middle East to get Israel back home. And now we got a whole bunch of people scared of 666. Christians too. Get a hold of that, Christians too that are scared of the mark of the beast, that are scared of, oh, the devil's going to overtake me. I'm sorry, but we ain't no teensy wimsy pennies and a bunch of Christians. We are saved. We are black buck. He said no power of hell, no demon in hell, no power of darkness, no principality can separate me from my love of my Savior. Hallelujah. Nothing can do it. Paul said, what shall separate me from the love of God? 
Nothing, nothing, nothing shall infirmities, shall trials and tribulation. My Lord, shall myself know what he said, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. You know, there are days when I've fallen so far away from God. As that song that we sang earlier, on that trod of sin, but grace rewrote my life. But mercy rewrote my life. But then when I would come to that place where tears running down my cheeks and crying out, oh God, would you show mercy upon my soul? Would you just give me another chance? And what would he do? Usher in all of a sudden the power of God would hit me. Lord, I need an answer. Lord, I have this problem. Even in this day, Lord, I have this problem. We're constantly being worked on. We're a project. Hallelujah. We're a project being worked on. But thank God the blueprints are already laid out. Well, what are the blueprints? Calvary. Calvary. And you're not the builder, so don't worry about the blueprints anyway. He's the builder. Paul said he is a master worker. Hallelujah. Can you imagine a contractor without no license going up to a, a million dollar company, say a Sharp Hospital or, or Remedies or whatever it may be, and they say, hey, I hear you guys are building this building somewhere. In San Diego, let's use that as an example, downtown. And I heard you guys have the blueprints. And I never worked a day in my life, but I want to help build. What do you think the owner is going to say? You're out of your right mind. You must be dumb. You must be an idiot. That's what the Holy Spirit thinks of us. Because we are a contractor without license, without knowledge on how he works. That's what Paul is stating to them. We don't know how we work. We are in the flesh. How can you guys think that the flesh can please God? We're powerless. But glory be to God. Glory be to God. He's given us faith. He's given us faith that we can use. You know, faith is the only thing that's going to stop this apostate church. Faith is the only thing that's going to stop this world from going into hell. This is the only thing. On believers praying. On believers seeking God. Not caring what the world says. Not caring what the church says. Not caring what who and what. And what. Look at this all and all. Who cares what your friends think of you? Who cares what your family thinks of you? Just get a hold of the Holy Ghost. Just get filled with the Holy Ghost. And he'll do something for you. He'll start changing your life. He'll start putting it in and, and, and building his foundation inside of you, which already has been laid the moment you believed. Get a hold of that. The moment you believed in God, the moment you said yes to Jesus, the moment you said, Lord, forgive me of all my sins, what happened? He started working in you. He started building in you. But then we come to the situation that we are now saved, we are now fit. And don't tell me that you've never been there. Or don't tell me that you're not going through there. That Emmanuel, I can do this. Oh, God, I can. I want to do this. I want to do this for you. And I am going to do this for you, Lord. You see, that phrase, that, that first phrase, I want to do this for you, is not bad. But that second phrase, Lord, I'm going to do this for you. That's when it's bad. Your willpower. You see the will, Lord, I want, to I want to please you. Lord, I want to live for you. Lord, I want my life to change. I'm sick of this hell that I'm living. I'm sick of my life. Not, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's gonna, where, I, where I'm going to be next year. I'm sick of it, Lord. I'm sick of I'm living day to day. I'm sick of fearing tomorrow. You're tired of it. You're tired of, Lord, how I'm, how I'm, Lord, how, how, how? And you find yourself chasing that how. And you get tired and you get driven by it. And then you find yourself that, oh, the 
devil brings it up. Hey, it's easier to do this though. It's easier to go back to this old habit. It's easier to go back to this old life. Oh, I remember, remember those good times. Oh, remember those good times we had back then? It was so much easier, wasn't it? You didn't have a fear. Because you knew where you were going. That's where you find yourself. You see, leaving the cross will not leave to a soul of being unsaved, unredeemed. No, you are still saved when you go by willpower. But your path will not be victory. It will be failure. It will be destruction. We make this life a living hell when all he wants to do is just bring forth life and peace. He wants you free. He wants you free from that bondage. He wants you free. Hallelujah. He wants you free from religion. He wants you free from the world. My Lord, let's, let's continue in it. It says a phrase, if so that the Spirit of God dwell in you, in essence proclaim, in essence saying, says, provided that, or assuming that. And that is assuming that the Spirit of God dwells in you. That is an indication that you are not in the sphere of the evil nature. Mm. Dwell in the Greek means to live or dwell in a certain place as your home. Mm. Wow. Doesn't that say something? That now that you believe God, now he says, I want to read that, that phrase. It says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So if that be the spirit of God that dwell in you, if you are truly saved, as Father Jerry Note said, if God, if you have really made your heart God's home, God's dwelling place, then why are you being dominated? By sin. Why are you being dominated by the flesh? You know, that's in a, that, I was in that state once. Where the Holy Spirit was telling me this very, this very question. If you so be the Spirit of God that dwell in you, then why are you, why are you in this situation that you place yourself in? And I remember those were self-inflicted wounds. When I was failing God in my personal life. Where I, was, where I was telling the Lord, why am I failing? The cross is it's supposed to be great. It's, there's supposed to be healing in the cross. There's deliverance in the cross. So why am I failing? Why am I falling short? Why am I heathen to the world? It was because of this very question. When you leave the cross, when you what do you mean about the cross? I'm talking about the finished work of Christ, not the wooden beam that he hung on. And though that being was gracious, it was. That is not our power source. Yes, that crown of thorns he wore. It was gracious in every form. Yes, it was. But that is not what saved you. His death saved you. Him dying when we should have been the one hanging on that cross. We paid that sin. Up. We, we owe that debt of sin. But he paid it for you. Why? Because he loved you that much. Hallelujah. Amen to that. Thank God He loves us. He is our advocate. Hallelujah. I love what we're going to be studying as Johnny preached on Sunday morning. If God be for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. So understand that God is not fighting against you. He's fighting for you inside of you. Mm. Why? Because your heart is not your temple anymore. You're no longer in control of your direction on what path you choose now. You're all of His. I love what, I love what 1 Corinthians chapter 6 says. It says, you are saved. With, therefore, you were lost in the blood. And therefore, now you are justified. But before that, even statement, it says, now which were some of you. Meaning that you were that adulterer. You were that extraordinary. You were that heresy against God, but then all of a sudden you've been washed, you've been purchased, and now what? You've been placed in Christ. Hallelujah. What did Paul say? Stand ye in Christ. You're now placed in Him. The moment you believed God, hallelujah, everything now became His. 
Your heart, your life is now His. You guys wondering why I'm up here? I'm not up here on my own decision. There are some days that I just want to quit. I want to call it ends. But the Holy Spirit says, I'm not finished with you yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not done with you yet. And then as David said, Lord, I lay my bed in hell. He was there with me. God will chase you all the way down to hell. You can lay yourself a bed in hell. And he will be in there in the midst of you. You can lay your bed in a midnight club. In a, in a, in a, in a, in a foreign land where you've never gone. But there you will find he's in the midst of you. Hallelujah. So, so now I want to get that out. God is our greatest advocate. Just because he wants those bad things in our lives out, he wants it out for a reason. It's because what he wants to replace that with blessings. Amen? Hallelujah. Lord, I want to be blessed. Lord, I don't want these things in my life there anymore. I don't want failure. I don't want the sin nature. I want the spirit of life in Christ Jesus to dwell in my life. And I hope you do too. You do too. Amen? I hope each and every single one of you guys want that, desire that. Because it, you may have to climb mountains. You may have to cross rivers. You may have to cross deep valleys. But my Lord, He is there each and every single step of the way. Hallelujah. It is saying, listen, listen, the scripture is saying that God dwell on your right side. He didn't say that God dwelleth in church. He didn't say let God dwell in a religious act. Woo! Hope I ain't getting none of you guys mad. He didn't say that God dwell in a rap show, in a rock, Christian rock concert, in communion. No. There's no power in communion. There's power in remembering what the communion stands for. The blood of Jesus Christ. The broken body of his life. Who he was and what he did. Pay for all sin. Pay for all unrighteousness. It's not in that. But he says that God that dwells inside of you. Oh, hallelujah. I want to read what the scholar says. Matthew Henry. And I only have about five minutes, so give me mercy. Give me grace. And let me tell you. What we have, this message of the cross, is something so great. If you just get a hold of it, if you just snap, if you just get into this Holy Ghost flow, my Lord, there is nothing but my Lord, victory ahead. Amen. Listen, it says, right here it says, by inquiring whether we have the Spirit of God in Christ or not, this is what this verse is describing, verse 9. You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. That expresses this expresses states and conditions of the soul. Vastly different. Vastly different. Get a hold of that. And it says, all the saints have flesh and spirit in them. Mm. We all have the sin nature in us, but by the grace of God, now we have the divine nature. Hallelujah. It's been restored at the cross. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my Lord, that blesses me so much. Why? Because I don't need alcohol to make me happy. Amen. I don't need a joint to make me happy. I don't need a girl to make me happy, to satisfy my needs. But that's all I need is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost who will never leave me, who will never forsake me, who will never cast me aside, who will never lead me off on the streets, who will never replace me. But he leads me daily. I love that on him. God leads his dear children all along. Guess what? Some through the fire. Some through the flood. Some through great sorrow. But guess what? We all come through the blood. We all come through the blood. Some. Some. Through great sorrow. But God gives a song. What's that song? What's that song that he gives us? It's victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is doing him. Yes, it is. He saw me and he bought me with his redeeming love. My Lord, ain't that something great? He has wonder why I'm shouting. He has wonder why I'm up here having a good time with a smile on my face. It's because my sins are gone. 
Every single solitary one of them. They're underneath the blood at the cross of Calvary. I have no regret. I have no fear of death. And no man can pluck me from the God from God's hands. Hallelujah. My Lord. I always go off track. Glory be to God, but at least a message is going forward. That if you just cling to him, hold on. My Lord, blessings. Listen, it says, but to be in the flesh and to be in the spirit are contrary. Contrary, excuse me. It denotes our being overcome and subdued by one of these principles. And that's stating you can either only be dominated by one or two. I mean, you only can be dominated by one. I wish you could be dominated by two. That brings compromise. That means, oh, I can sin a little bit and then I can also do this. I'm sorry, God don't work that way. You don't know how many people say that he wished he did. That, oh, I, and there's so many Christians today that think, oh, I can sip on my booze, only 2%, but hey, on a good Sunday for the Super Bowl, God don't mind that thing. His grace covers my sins. <laughs> oh, he loves me, yes, he does. He loves me just as I am. Yes, he does. He loved you just as you are to save you from who you are. Amen. Amen. Glory. Amen. Because, my Lord, we will find ourselves in a ditch somewhere on the street in a back alley where all the party is done, where all the fun is done, all that supposedly fun. It says sin, sin is only pleasing for a moment. It's only pleasing for a season. But when all your friends go away and you're stuck at night alone and all the fun is gone and you wake up in the morning with that, with that big old headache and you wonder what, you don't know what you did last night, believe me, and then you, you, you regret it. You're vomiting everywhere. You've got a big old headache. You're, you're killing your brain cell. All of that is happening. Death. 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 But let me tell you, when you get a hold of Jesus, when he becomes that new wine, that fermented wine, hallelujah, when he becomes your daily bread, all of a sudden you're singing glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Good stuff, ain't it? Let me finish what I'm reading. Keep on going on straight. I'm going to close with this. Uh, it says, as we say, a man is in love or in dream that is overcome by it. Now, the great question is whether we are in the flesh or in the spirit and how we come to know it. Why by current, by, excuse me, by inquiring whether the spirit of God and dwelling is mutual. God, I mean, dwelleth in God, in God and Him. Then let's go to that John, 1 John 4, 16. And I know I said that, I read that poorly, but I want to read this because it really states on how it came to be. It says, But thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care into the heart. Oh, excuse me, that's the wrong thing. Happens to me. I think it's in my notes right here. Just give me a moment. I'm going to load this slow. All these books I have. Let me just go to it. John, John four, first John four, verse sixteen. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. And he who dwells in love dwells in God, in God in him. What, what is that love talking about, though? It's not just talking about me hugging my friend. That's what people, in, in God, and in, in a man's point of view, that's what they think it is. Our nation right now, I kid you not, thinks love is two men man holding hands. Our definition of love is two women holding hands. Our definition of love is a black man holding a white man's hand. And I'm all for that. I'm not racist. But that is not love. Love is a, is a man, a God, manifesting himself in flesh, dying for humanity, that spit and crucified him, that nailed him to a cross, but loved him so much 
that he would pay that horrible death that separated God from man. That's love. Amen. Calvary is love. You know, I love this. My oh Lord, I love this statement. Some people say when the, su the Supreme Court had that ruling that love won. No, love already won. 2,000 years ago. Amen. On Calvary's cross. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, two men holding hands. And ain't two women kissing. But it's God dying on the cross. Hallelujah. My Lord. That's what love is. And then I love what the commenter stated. Well, how do I know that the Spirit of God is dwelling in me? You know it by this. Because you have believed. If you believe it, nothing can separate you from it. Singers, musicians, make your way back.